All right, so let's talk about variables and methods. So to do this, we're going to make a new file. So let's do gedit, and we're gonna call this one script.py, because in the last video I told you, we're just gonna start building off of these scripts, and we're just gonna keep it in one script and keep it going. So let's gedit script.py. We'll do one more shebang here of bin python3. And then we're gonna go ahead and just build this out. I'm gonna drag this over just a little bit. So let's put a, another uh, comment up here and we'll just call this variables and methods. And let's define a variable. So let me show you what a variable looks like and then we'll define what a variable really is. So let's start with a quote and you can pick your favorite quote here. And we're just gonna say something like, all is fair and love and war. Okay, so what's happening here is we are creating a variable of quote. Now a variable, all you can think of a variable is as a placeholder. So instead of typing out all is fair and love and war, we can just call this placeholder at a later time and it knows, hey, I'm gonna call this information. So it's gonna store this information inside of quote and then later we just call quote and it'll print it out. So we can do something like print quote and save this. And I forgot to ampersand, so excuse me, we're gonna close it. And let's just run script.py, sorry, python3 script.py. You can see it says all is fair in love and war. So if we gedit this and add the ampersand now, so we defined what was in our variable here, which was this, this string, right? We've talked about strings. We put a string here as our quote and we printed the quote. So if we didn't put the print in here, and we just, we can copy this and just delete it. If we save this and we go to print this now, there's nothing telling this to print. So we have quote and we have a, a uh, quote stored in our quote variable, but nothing instructing it to print. So we can we can leave the print back in there, just copy and paste it back, and now it'll print that quote. Now we also have what are called methods. Okay, so methods are basically functions that are available for a given object. Okay, so don't worry too much about that description. Uh, that's very uh, dictionary based description. Just think about what a method does. So I'll show you these methods here. So a method might look something like print quote, and then let's say we wanna make quote upper. So in order to make it uppercase, all uppercase, we're just gonna throw in this method of upper. So we just say dot upper. And if we were to save that and print it, look, now the text is all uppercase. And you can make a note in here if you want and just say makes it uppercase. And we can copy this. Let's just copy this whole line like this. And let's paste a couple here. So we could also do something like lower for lowercase. Or we can do something like title for title case. And we can make notes here of lowercase and title case. Okay, and we save that. And when you print it, what do you think is going to happen here? So we're gonna say all is fair in love and war, all is fair in love and war. And you can see in title case, not perfect. It's capitalizing the and here and the in and the is, uh, but it does capitalize every first letter as it's instructed to do here. So these are methods. Uh, there's also other things that we can do. We can do something like, say we wanna get the length of this quote, we wanna know how many characters are inside the quote. We can do something like print length of quote. Okay, and we can just say save and let's see what it prints out. Okay, so 28. Now it's 28 characters completely. If we were to count this all up, including the spaces, there's 28 characters there. So let's make this a little bit more interesting and let's talk a little bit more, more about math and bring that into it and try to tie this all together with what we've learned so far. So let's use your name. Let's define a variable of your name and we're gonna set it as a string. So my name is Heath. So we'll just say, this is a string, right? 
And let's also define your age. Now I'm 30 and we'll say this is what is called an int or an integer. Okay, and let's say, what's your grade point average? And my grade point average was 3.7. And this is what is called a float. Now, what is the difference between an integer and a float? Well, an integer has no decimal point. A float does. So if I was 30, day, or 30 years and 27 days, I might be 30.1 years old, right? But if I only define as an integer, if I say int 30, then that's going to define that this number is an integer and nothing else. Same thing with float. If we want to have the decimal point there, we can float a number and define it as like 3.7. So let's make more sense of this. We can print out the integer of my age. And we can also print out the integer of my, or we could say 30.1. And let's see what happens as we discussed here. So let's save this and let's just print out those two. And look, it takes 30.1 and makes it 30. And it takes the integer, integer of age and makes it 30 as well. Now, what if this is 30.9? What do you think is going to happen? Do you think it's going to round? It in fact does not round. So you can see 30.9 still came out to 30 down here. It doesn't matter. It just takes this first number when we call an integer. So make sure that if you ever use integer, you know that it does not round. So let's build upon this again. We could take a string now and let's print out a string. We could say something like my name is and then you could say plus name. Make sure you add the space in there, right? And you can also say space and I am space. And then let's define an age. So if we try to put age in here, watch what happens. So we're going to say age and we'll say space years old. And let's save this here like this, and I'll give you a second to catch up. So again, we're adding a space, a space in the beginning, space at the end, space at the end here, just so that we have the syntax right or else it's going to all bunch up together. So let's try to print this out. And you can see cannot concatenate a string, not integer to string. So this age here is sitting here as an integer. You can't concatenate a string with an integer. So how do we fix that? Well, what we can do here is we can actually put this into a string format. So we'll just say string of age, something like this, and save it. And now it makes it to a string. So similar as we made something into an integer and how we can make something into a float, we can also make something into a string. So if we come through here and we hit enter, you can see now that it works. My name is Heath and I am 30 years old. So a couple more things to note. What if we had something like our age and you know we got a year older? Well, we can just say something like age plus equals one. And we could say print our age. Now watch what happens. Age is now 31. Even up until that point, age has been 30, right? You see age coming through here. We're utilizing it in all three places. Now we print age down here and it's 31 because we have changed what is stored in the variable. So again, the variable here of age, we had 30 stored in it. Up until the instruction is called to add one plus equals one. So we're just adding one to this age variable here then it stays 30. Now it is 31 until we change it again. So we can also do something along the lines of birthday equals one. So we have a value of birthday. And then we could say age plus equals birthday. And then you're going to print your age again. 
And guess how old we're going to be? We are going to be 32. So it doesn't matter how you store it. You can do the plus equals here or minus equals if you wanted to take away. And you can start incorporating your math into your variables. You can incorporate your variables into your strings and you can start tying this all together. So if you need to rewatch this and to make more sense of it, that's absolutely fine. I'm going to harp one more time on this. Take good notes, practice, practice, practice. This is stuff that can get overwhelming very quick, but hopefully I'm explaining it slow enough and you're you're getting it. If you're not getting it, please do rewatch the video. Please take notes and please utilize outside resources as well. I understand that I might not always be the best at teaching a particular subject or sometimes it takes another person uh, hearing it again from somebody else to see this. Coding is not necessarily easy, but once it clicks, it clicks and a lot of it is just repetition. So that is it for this video. We've started to tie everything together. Now from here, we're going to move into what are called functions and build upon all of this. So I'll catch you over in the next video on functions.